No way is Al's gonna start talking about ketamine. Isn't that that horse tranquilizer? What in God's name is going over in the parliament there? <laughs> I hope you, I, 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 I hope, I hope none of you actually think that, right? I really hope you don't think that. Because we are here today to really bring awareness to a lot of the different can't say plant-based medicines with this one, right? But the different uh, opportunities for us to be introspective for ourselves, our bodies, and to also know what we're consuming and to go deeper into that. We're owls, we're the home of Wise Up Wellness, and we're here to make sure that you're educated when it comes to the different types of medicines, drugs, that you want to use to try and help and improve your human experience. And today I want to talk about ketamine. So ketamine many years ago was really just looked at as like, isn't that the thing that they give horses? That's like the horse tranquilizer, right? It's like, it's not just for horses, right? It's not just like it's a horses only. It's like it's ketamine and it's given to horses, right? And so um, ketamine right now is being trialed out. Uh, actually, uh, there's a lot of ketamine clinics across America. I couldn't, couldn't believe this when I started seeing this. And ketamine is actually being shown to be such a wonderful antidepressant. And I am not going to get in. I could get into it quickly now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at this uh, quickly. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna nuke, we're gonna just, we're gonna cut this a bit while I jump back in once I've found the information. But long story short is that antidepressants have literally been shown to not do shit. And so before I start rambling off on this, I wanna just pull it up and, uh, and then we'll just cut back into it. So basically the study done in 2022 found that, um, basically, and I quote, we found the change in health related quality of life to be comparable or similar between patients that use antidepressant medications and those who did not use them. And you know, it's interesting, it's like, I, I think a lot about placebos and how it works and that if you believe you're taking something well, then it makes you feel better. And so basically, um, so yeah, basically said overall antidepressants tend to be nominally effective even in the short term. Much of that impact can be chalked up to the non-medicinal placebo effect. And so what that means is, is that, uh, and also just like there's a shit ton of people who are on antidepressants. It's like, it's not even funny. And so I think that the, uh, right now, just from reading this, it was like 2% of people in England and, uh, and something like, what was it? I think it was something like 17.5 million US Americans. Uh, let me see. Yeah, 17.5 uh, were newly diagnosed with depression. So anyway, not to get off the, not to get off the racetrack here, but the, the main thing is, is that we have an, a, 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 pretty, a pretty serious issue with mental health and how we treat mental health. And when it comes to the things like depression, what's not getting better? Well, if, the, if you live the same life and you just think you're gonna take a pill and it's gonna be different, it ain't gonna be different. And so if you wanna take the pill to try and change that, it, it's not really gonna work. And so what is really needing to happen? Do we need to have a, a, a plaster or a little band-aid put on the thing so you hope it's gonna go away and then you look at the band-aid again, it's like, no, it's, that's a pretty serious wound. Or is it gonna be like, you know what, this thing needs stitches, right? And we need to like address this right now. For a lot of people, they can't go deeper into themselves because then we have to start taking responsibility for the fact that we are the problem. We are the result of the issues. We feel like this because of the life that we choose to live, or we are this because of the life we choose not to live. And so when it comes to something like ketamine, ketamine is what's called a dissociative. So it is used, uh, it is used, and the beauty is this ketamine has been used for many years medicinally. Uh, it is used as a, oh, what's it called again? An, ana, an anesthesia? Oh God, I'm butchering that. Basically the thing to, I think it's an anesthesia. Uh, to, it is that, uh, to, to, uh, to relax you and to, to sometimes to put you out. And, um, and basically it will be used, it, it sort of disconnects you from the physical, 
and the mind and the body, as odd as that sounds, again, trying to trying to like talk about this is like is difficult if you've never experienced it. There's two types of ketamine, just like there's two types of like HHC, there's the R and the S isomer. One is is down and like sedative, the other one is racemic and up. Not up, but just not down. And it's more sort of psychedelic and trippy. And so what exactly happens on ketamine is like, it almost is like that you have this third perspective that comes in where it's like, you get to see these aspects of yourself, almost like from a third person that you wouldn't be able to see. That makes you ask questions around, oh, why do I do this? Or like really seeing like the left and the right side of the brain, like how they work. And oh, I'm being really emotional here. And on this side, I'm being really analytical or whatever it is. It really helps to give you that perception. And, um, and to give you an, another example, right? Um, and again, a lot of the time, I can't really say that I was using, I was using this more partying, right? So I, I, I think that there's, there's a big difference here of like, uh, and people often say this like, oh yeah, I take ketamine medicinally. It's like, look, you ain't taking ketamine medicinally at the party, right? Like you're, 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 you're taking ketamine medicinally when you are going to a therapist and you sit down with them in the run on one and you take your ketamine and then that's, that's, that's medicinal. Um, you know, maybe taking a little, you see, it's, it's, it is water solid where you can put in a nasal spray and you can just, and you get an accurate dose, right? You can actually go to doctors that prescribe you this. Um, but uh, it's not railing lines, right? And like, you know, that's, that's a very different, a very different thing. And so um, I remember this one time and I was actually going to the bathroom, right? So I'm, I'm taking a pee and, uh, and I remember I was observing like these negative thought cycles that I was having and how I was treating myself poorly. And I was looking at the pee, right? And it was like, as that was happening, the thoughts and the things were like flowing out of my body, as odd as that sounds. And, and, I, and that's really what it does. It really helps you to go introspective and ask questions of yourself. And don't get me wrong, ketamine is a wonderful place to be and you won't get shit done and suddenly everything is fine. It's just like an amped up version of, you know, marijuana almost where it's like yeah everything's cool like life's great and it's like you're sitting like your life's miserable you haven't cleaned your house you've been sitting on trash for the whole time you've been eating junk food watching the watching the tv like that's not you know that's that's not lit so there is a there is a level of abuse don't get me wrong but again for people who are on this journey which i really believe that we are on um al's is really trying to focus al's is focusing on the health benefits right we are we are focusing on how we can improve people's lives and at the end of the day you are the person in charge of that and so rather than believing in like the reefer madness and all these things we hear about drugs like do things to go deeper into yourself and you will be surprised what you find and so with ketamine itself it comes in like a crystalline structure typically it can be snorted it can be uh, it can be, you know, uh, put in a water base either, and um, and it's pretty safe. Tobacco kills more than eight million people a year. Now, I suppose I should really have checked America, but like, and then alcohol. I mean, I'm from Ireland. I mean, it's a joke. Yeah, so 480,000 people, 480,000 people from tobacco, alcohol. Let's just have a look. Alcohol, 140,000 people. Right, and you gotta ask yourselves, right? Like, just, just, just break this down in your head, right? Now, of course, people can say, well, hey, alcohol's more available, more deaths, right? Whatever it is. 140,000 people from alcohol. Ketamine, 138. So when you look at this and you start to ask yourself, well, whoa, I had all these stigmas associated with this. Like, I always thought that this is like, this horse tranquilizer and it just kills people. And it's like, well, actually that's not the truth. Can it be abused? Absolutely. Can you die from it? Yes, you can. Of course, if you took too much, I mean, it's, it's here, but it's been used already in a, med in a, in a medical setting. And so again, my main point for, is, is to not just suddenly 
get everybody trying all different types of drugs, right? Like I, I'm not, I'm not for that, but am I for people being introspective about themselves and analyzing themselves? Absolutely. I think it's really important for us to all go deeper into ourselves and ketamine is just one of those options to do so. Am I ever going to do a thing on like on cocaine and like, you know what, how you should be taking cocaine every day for its medicinal benefits? Fuck no, right? No, I don't know any. And you know what? There is some people that would argue that, right? But in our day and age, no. The amount of deaths that come from that and the blood, no way. But when we're talking about these others, psychedelics, ketamine is, can be more of a psychedelic. Like c cocaine and these heroin, those things are like yucky, yucky, yucky. Right. And, and I will say this, at the end of the day, these people are trying their best to help themselves. It just ends up being the heroin's their best choice, as horrible as it sounds. But who are we to judge anybody? Right. And so that's all. I, I, I really just want to give you the tools to do your own research and examine. If you're someone who's really depressed all the time, you've taken Zoloft, you take. Look, my sister has is, 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 is got, is got a lot of depression. And I'm always asking the question of like, when. It, when is when it, when are we coming off the drugs, right? Like when it, when it, like when is the like we're back to like the we're, we're like what are we doing to help us to build ourselves into the human that we want to be and not be depressed? And unless you have a chemical imbalance, but the studies already done, so like majority of us don't have a chemical imbalance. So it's really coming back to we are depressed because we are unsatisfied with our lives. We are depressed because we are in environments that we don't want to be in. We're afraid. We, we, we keep ourselves afraid and we're, we have a lack of confidence and we don't want to try anything, so your life's miserable. I know I'm going to catch a lot of whack for that one, but uh, that's it. And so, and then, and then if you need some support and help, take something along the way, but recognize that you are the one in power. You are the one who has responsibility for your life. If you need to go to the doctor and get something prescribed, by all means, go and do that. But I'm just telling you that you absolutely have the power to examine yourself and go deeper into yourself. That's all I have for you today. I hope you found this useful. I wish you the best. And uh, please shoot some questions below. Thanks for watching.